we go. We are live. Hey, Tom Britt coming to you live from the uh, New Spark Apartments right here in the Nickel Plate District of Fishers. I'm uh, joined with uh, Scott Fatness, of course, the, the mayor who joins us every month. Welcome. Thank you, Scott, for taking time. And also Cecilia Koble, who's a at-large council person here in uh, the city of Fisher. So Cecilia, thank you for joining us. This has been a really uh, fun month. I think it's been kind of fun to see this Disability Awareness Month really come to life. I think it's been going on now for about three years or so. And you know, Cecilia, I think, was out the forefront of this, championing this. But the city got behind it big time. Uh, talk about it from the city perspective. Why is this so important for uh, It's an example, the city goal is an example of a true champion of a particular cause. Uh, she's the one that came to City Hall and said, I want to do this, this is what I want to do. I want to give a voice to a group of people in our community that haven't had a voice. And really, uh, it's been so diligent about making sure that our residents with uh, various disabilities have the opportunity to feel like they're a part of our community. and. It really manifests itself in this month-long series of events that Cecilia and her committee spend uh, 11 other months right. trying to put together, and every year it's just gotten bigger and better, and it is in no small part uh, uh, Councilwoman Goble's efforts. It is beautiful to see it play out. And, and talk about your connection to this. This is your, your passion, but you, you're dealing with this at home. Sure, absolutely. Well, we, we moved to Fishers because of the school system. We have an excellent special education program here. Our daughter, Krista, who's now 16, she's at Fishers High School in Life Skills. Uh, she has autism, so we were coming here to Fishers to receive ABA services through VACA and learned about the school system, and, and we knew that this community could provide a lot of resources for Krista, and we found out that there are so many families coming here because of that, families who have special needs children. So this is a, something that hits home to us and I felt like as a city council member it was something that it was wanting I'm wanting to do to help not only my daughter but other families here in Fishers to provide a life that that she can be a contributor and other other families too that their their children can be contributors be part of our our community here in Fishers. I would have to guess that in the process of doing this um, you're probably getting people coming out of the woodwork that you had no idea were residents of Fishers that are not lobbying on, but they're behind this as well. Are you seeing this uh, at the city level of just the, yeah. the momentum behind this movement? It grows every year, and what it also does is every time a new person comes forward, they bring with them a unique insight or perspective and what it's like for them to be a Fishers resident. Um, and when they do that and they share that, it educates all of us, whether it's at the council level, my level, uh, or staff level, that insight and experience of what it's like to be someone in a wheelchair, to be someone uh, from the deaf community or, or blind or disabled in any particular way, um, it really has shaped and informed our public policy from the broadest levels of housing down to something as simple as when we have a community event, are we thinking through the lens of someone who maybe has a different experience than uh, we do. So we've gotten better because of those people coming forward and sharing their experiences. And he ha I have to mention, so we've got these two all-stars uh, who are part of the kickoff uh, at the beginning of the month. We've got Noah here, this unbelievable track star, um, and he's legally blind. <clears throat> you've got Jordan here, who's probably the most popular person in his family now because he's been on the cover of the magazine. Yes. This guy's like a soccer player playing world soccer tournaments. It's an unbelievable. What, what's been the, the, what have you been seeing on the other side? I'm, I'm sure as a parent, you're like a magnet for these folks coming out of the woodwork. Absolutely. Well, they're just inspirational. Their, their story of overcoming challenges, mm -hmm. of sharing that, that here in Fishers, we're, we're providing opportunities for people like Noah and Jordan and that the city is open and willing to learn and work collaboratively with all of our community partners whether it's a service provider the school system parents educators we're all coming together to build a life without limits and that's kind of been our overarching theme uh, this year's month it's empowering fishers ask how and so we're trying to engage the community to learn more about accommodations about how you can uh, bring people with disabilities into your workforce 
how can you celebrate the talents and artistic abilities of individuals with physical and intellectual disabilities? One of the things I think is so unique that Cecilia brought up earlier is you know, her, her energy and effort to make sure that her daughter can be a productive member of society. And there's a lot of conversation about employment that it's not about charity, what can we do to help these individuals so much as it is, how do we open up doors so that they can reach their maximum potential in our society. So, uh, you know, I have been uh, schooled in the ways of this in regard to, I have two amputees that uh, are employees of the fire department. I mean, if you think about that, how extraordinary that is. That, uh, and so you learn that there are skill sets and talents and capabilities that maybe don't come in the form and function that we all have become accustomed to, but they can be valuable employees. And I think uh, Cecilia had an event yesterday where she really rallied a lot of the companies around Fishers, and we need more to come to these conversations so that they can learn that there's an, an incredible talent pool in a very tight talent market right now of individuals that will be the most loyal, dedicated employees you'll find anywhere. Now, are you seeing some of that, Cecilia? Are you seeing some of the employers now looking for opportunities within their business absolutely as as we invite businesses to come in the month of march and come to our presentations they've they've had a awakened moment and now we have companies like connor prairie statwax memory ventures kroger uh, various restaurants i mean everyone's looking within their corporate culture to see can we bring in a, a more diverse workforce that includes people with physical and intellectual disabilities and look at their capabilities and match them to the needs of the employer. And it's amazing, the stories. Uh, parents yesterday who were there to listen were like, thank you, this, this brings hope into our community. I feel, I feel like this is possible for my son, my daughter. So that was really cool to see that happen yesterday. Is there any other city around doing this kind of stuff? Well, I, I'd never heard of the Disability Awareness Month until Fisher. There are certainly groups, I'm sure, communities that are doing various activities, but I have not seen a community stay as consistent and dedicated to this particular cause as Cecilia and the team uh, on this. I, I, I don't think so. And the governor uh, recognized our community, uh, I think it was last year, wasn't it, Cecilia? Mm -hmm as a community that truly understands and is, is kind of leading the way in this particular area. That's something that I think every resident uh, should be proud of. In fact, Carmel, some of my uh, colleagues, uh, counterparts at the, at the council level in Carmel are now asking, how can we do this? Because uh, they want to start changing the, the dynamic of their city. So they're, they're looking at the things that we have done and uh, looking to do that in their, in their Which is not unusual for Carmel, though. <laughs> 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 follow of course, yeah. Because yeah. well, it's downtown. Yeah, right. well, they, they got figured out. Yeah, right. <laughs> Playing with no yeah. sound system. I mean, think about it. <laughs> so, um, let's talk about upcoming events. So, the, the month has been busy. You've had a lot of <coughs> excuse me, great events happening already. Tonight, you got a big event. Right. It, is it Counter Prairie? Tonight? Yes, yes. So, we changed it up this year. Last year, it has been at City Hall for the past few years. But what this is, is we're, we're exhibiting all of the wonderful artistic talents of people with disabilities who are artists. We're going to have to show those exhibits. Uh, people are going to be able to walk around, meet the artists. The Fishers Community Chorus is going to play. Miss Indiana is going to be there taking photographs, pictures. And it's a celebration of artistic talents. And, and it's important. And the, the really cool thing this year is that various businesses around our community are also exhibiting the artwork. Places like Braden Systems, um, Meyer Najums, and City Hall. So all month long, you'll be able to walk in and see all this artistic work. It's just really beautiful. It is awesome to see it happening, and you know, I, I got to tell you firsthand, when I go to a restaurant or if I go to a business and I see someone with any kind of disability working there, they're always the hardest working people in that building. And I've talked to owners of restaurants before, I, I commented, it was a Dairy Queen that had a guy that worked in, and I commented to the owner, I said, that guy works harder than anybody here, he goes, he said, he's never late, he works late every time, I have to tell him to go home, he doesn't want to go home. And I think if, if businesses could look at this as, well, maybe we should, you know, we have some things we could do here with someone and, and just give them a chance. Mm -hmm. So in, in the course of this, and I'm not going to hold you to this number, but how many people do you think that, that the city and that your group is affecting each month 
by doing this um, appreciation? Is it, are you talking about dozens of people with, with disabilities? Are you talking about hundreds of people? I mean, help us get a I, handful. I'm thinking thousands of people because we, we're now engaging the school system. So uh, Best Buddies is involved. Yeah. We, we have an adaptive sports showcase coming up on March 23rd at Fishers High School Gymnasium where we're going to feature different uh, adaptive sports teams and groups. And it's like a pep rally uh, exhibition and fun night, engaging, and we're going to have giveaways and things. So Best Buddies is coming. So each year, more groups are starting to know more about us, and we're engaging more groups. And, and I would say we're impacting not just people in Fishers, but uh, in Hamilton County and the surrounding areas. Well, hats off to you for championing such a great cause, and hats off to you for, I mean, not embracing it, but just really going all well, in. This is all Cecilia and her leadership, but I'm glad to be a part of it. I know, and it's, it's just great to see. I, I love to see this happening. I love to see the smiles on their faces. Uh, I was talking to, um, you know, political season, so I was at a little fundraiser last night. I was talking to a parent that had a child with special needs that's uh, going to HSC High School. He's gonna graduate. But she was telling me that when she goes out in public with him, like the Kroger or the Target or whatever, that the, the other students in the school always come up and say hi to him. And they're always smiling at him. He's like the most popular person in their entire family. Now, they, he has older siblings who didn't get quite the uh, same experience that he's getting. But it's just great to see the students creating that culture in the, in the schools that makes them feel welcome and appreciated and special. So thank you for what you're doing. Oh, and, thank uh, you. And continue the, the march on. I know uh, in parting here, it's a political season, so there's a lot of, a lot of people out this yeah. time of year. It's, it's a busy time for both of you, so th thank you for taking time to spend with us. And until next month, we're going to do something really crazy next month. The weather's going to turn. Uh, what are you thinking? I know this wrestler guy that I might bring back. No, 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 no costumes, no costumes. I never know what Tom what's going to happen. I know. Uh, just asked me about the why thing yesterday. But anyway, until next time, guys, have a great weekend and uh, try to stay dry. It's going to be raining all weekend, so stay dry. But uh, check out the latest Fishers Magazine for the full schedule of events happening for the Disability Awareness Month. And until then, have a great weekend.